Amen. Welcome everybody online. You've been prayed for. And I want to tell you what, I'm excited about this message. Has there ever been a time that I ever said I'm not excited about the message? I'm always excited about sharing what God's doing. And I'm going to tell you what, today is, is going to be just the same. We are going to keep on rolling with that. So we got some digging to do today. Everybody ready to do some digging? Say amen. amen. All right. I'm ready. You guys are ready to roll. How many people like a treasure hunt? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool. You know, when you were little, you had the maps and you were looking out there digging up your mama's flowers and things like that, trying to find something. Well, today, we don't even have to get our hands dirty, but I'm going to tell you what, we are going to do some digging today, amen? So when you look at those things, why did we like that? Why did we like searching out and, and looking for something? Because there was something of great value. And let me tell you, there is nothing greater than the value that God places on, on you and on me, and it's very obvious when you look to the cross, amen, because he purchased us out of our sin debt in full. So I want to go through today, and a lot of times I'm going to be asking some questions, kind of engaging folks. How many people like questions, like to be a part of the home team? All right, we got three people that's volunteered already. All right, good. Mr. Bobby, you ready, aren't you? He said, amen. He don't care. He's ready. If it's for Jesus, he's in. That's good. But we have a great time here. I just want to say something real fast for you guys tuning in. We appreciate you all tuning in. And I know sometimes you can't make it out, but you really miss out when you're not here in person. We have a great time of fellowship, don't we? So do you got room for anybody else? Anybody? We got room, don't we? Bring it on. So let's go through this. And, and I want to be talking about buried treasure today. Y'all say that with me. Ready? Buried treasure. And it's even got a question mark on it. So I'm going to kind of unpack that. But in our culture today... Life's value is usually found in what we achieve and what we accumulate, isn't it? Oh, this is what I got. This is where I live. This is where I work. This is what I own. This is my investment. Did you hear any of that? You know? Now, all those things don't have to be bad. And I think when they're in the proper uh, placement in our life, they're fine. But sometimes we get them out of whack a little bit, don't we? So when I walk through the message today, I hope that you guys uh, just allow God to put these things in the proper place. But you know, the thing about all these things we accumulate, those things eventually fade away, don't they? Somebody say amen there. We each have a treasure chest full of life experience that will die with us unless we intentionally share them as we go through. Now, you see where I'm getting with this? I want to read that again. We all have a treasure chest, chest full of life experience that will die with us unless we become intentional about distributing the wealth. The value of your life is found when we share those experiences with others. That's setting the stage here today. I'm very serious about what I'm talking about today. And I, I wrote this down. I said, life is not about what you accumulate. It's about the lives you impact along the way for the kingdom of God. God is not going to ask you. I can't find anywhere in scripture that he asks you, how many cars did you own, buddy? How about that 401k? How'd you do with that? Right? I never see that in scripture. But I do see where we're going to be accountable for how we shared our faith and how we helped others and how we were blessings along the way. So with that being in mind, that's going to be the framework. So I'd like to open up doing a little reading. If you got your Bibles today, it's going to be Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to run through a few things, got to unpack this. And this is about the parable of the bags of gold. Let me just say that we're talking about bags of gold here, but don't just keep it to that. It could be talents of what you do, uh, how you use your gifts. But Jesus uses this to kind of draw them in. And, and a bag of gold, how many know a bag of gold is worth a little bit of money? Something of great value. What God has placed in you is worth more than any gold there could ever be. Matter of fact, when I was doing some research, a talent that they talked about, they said now it would be about $1.3, $1.5 million a bag. Could you work with that? Okay, there you go. Some people say, yeah, I'm, yeah, where did I sign up? Well, I'll tell you what, what you have in Christ surpasses that by so much more. Amen. You can't buy it. So let's dig in to God's treasure chest of his word. All right. Everybody doing good? Say amen. amen. All right. Let's roll with this thing a little bit. Got to do a little unpacking. In Matthew 25, starting in verse 14. And again, Jesus is teaching. He's using a parable. He's telling them about something that, uh, of the world so he could use something of the world that he could turn around and, and teach them about things of the kingdom. Amen? So look at this. And he says this. He's talking about the things of the kingdom. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted him, then his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and another one bag, each according to their abilities. Say to his ab ability, right? I want you to check that out. Then he went on his journey. The man who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work. 
and gain five more bags. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now look at this. Let's kind of pull this together. We're talking about a master that went away, right? Did Jesus leave this earth and go and prepare a place for us? You see how we're inserting some of these things in the story? Absolutely. Did Jesus entrust us as his servants with something of great value? Amen, he did. Can you insert yourself in this story? That's what I hope you see there. We are entrusted with the best news ever. Something that pays eternal dividends. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He rose on the third day. He's sitting on the right hand side of God. And guess what? He's interceding for you and I. And when we come to him in faith and ask him to forgive our sins, which all have sinned and fall short of glory of God, he says, I will receive you. Now, I'm going to tell you what. There is nothing better than being forgiven, is it? Anybody need some forgiveness from time to time? Here's one. Anybody need to give some forgiveness from time to time? All right. This message is for us. Amen. Well, let's keep on going. And it says, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who received five bags of gold brought the five other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's and your master's happiness. The man with two bags. Tim, you can follow along with me if you would, brother. I'm going to keep on rolling. So the man with two bags of gold also came. He said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. All right. Number 23. Here we roll. His master replied, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. I want to talk for just a minute. I talk to people all the time, and I used to have this mentality. If I just had a little more, I could really make it work. How about that? I'll just tell you one time. I, I got into the stock market a while back, and I thought I had it all figured out. I mean, all you do is just look at this thing going up and that going down and all that. And I put a little money in there and lost a little money, and then I put a little bit more money in there. And, but the good news was I had a stopping point, right? I said, if, if I can't do nothing with this amount of money, I'm not going to do it. And so... It took me a whole year to lose my little bit of money, but I lost it, right? And I said this to my buddy that me and him were both getting into this. I said, you know what? If we had more money and before I could finish my sentence, you know what I was going to say? We'd have done all right. He said, yeah, kid, we would have lost more money. <laughs> I think he was right because I didn't have all the pieces of the puzzle. I didn't understand that. Now, let me tell you what I know about the stock market right now. I don't deal with it. How about that? <laughs> so, you know, that's all right if you do that. But I'm using those, those object lessons and real things that I went through. It's going, hey, you know, maybe that's not my thing. So let's go on back here. Verse 24. Then the man who received one bag of gold, master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathered where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Look how he responds. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that a harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. 28. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and thrown and throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I'm going to take a drink of water on down. Everybody say amen. amen. Started off good. All of them had the same opportunity, even though they didn't have the same amount of, of talents given. God didn't expect the guy with one to do like the guy with, with five and, and all that. He says, I, I, I'm according to what you can do. I'm going to walk through this a little bit. So it sounds like the master took what he entrusted his servants with pretty seriously, didn't he? How many know that Jesus paid that price in full and he's entrusting us with the word of eternal life and he takes it pretty serious, amen? 
He takes it pretty serious because you know what? You might be the one that holds the key to the kingdom to share with somebody else. Now, ultimately, God is going to bring forth the, the fruit in that, but you might be the delivery boy or girl. Amen? And I wanted you to hear that today. You know, the master expected his servants to invest like he did. Are you investing in the things of God? There's a lot of teaching in here now. Look at this. Do we multiply what God has given us? Don't get mixed up and think I'm talking just about stuff. I'm talking about how do we pour into people? Do we mentor people? Do we, we speak life into life? Let's take a look. Now, I'm going to take a minute here. Don't miss the meaning again. I want to make sure. This is not limited to just money or gold. Some people read the story and they go, oh, well, it's gold and it's money. And I, hey, man, I'm talking about stuff that money can't buy. I just want to throw that in as we go. All right, look at this. It could be your talent. It could be your abilities. It could be your gifting, your, your opportunities, and so on. See, notice something here. The first two servants understood the master. They knew the master, and they knew what he did, and they modeled and mimicked what he did, and he multiplied what they had. Amen? Look at this. Come on down here. They were both obedient to the master. They were quick to be about the master's business. Why was that? Because they knew the master, and they modeled his ways. Now, notice in verse 26, we still got it up here. And look at this. He says, you wicked and lazy servant. That is a huge clue of how this thing's getting ready to go. He gave each to their ability, right? The master knew what each was capable of. God knows what you're capable of. You're not going to be judged on what, what I'm supposed to do. I'm not going to be judged on what you're supposed to do, right? You're going to be accountable for what God has called you to do. It might look totally different than what I do. However, it is equally important to the kingdom of God. I want you to see that today. This is a good place to say amen. Anybody want to say amen just get it out of there? Amen. amen. That's what I'm talking about. We got to get ready for this revival, man. Come on. We got to do it. So look at this. We come on down here, and he gave each of them to their ability. But out of all the words he could use, he chose those two. Wicked and lazy. I just thought about this last night. He didn't say, you dummy. He didn't say he was stupid. He didn't say any of those things. Let's read it again. He says, wicked and lazy. I was talking to Tim and Tanya about this yesterday, and they brought up a great point. It was never about the servant's ability. It was always about the servant's heart condition. You see what I'm talking about here? It's about your heart condition. You can spend your whole life going, well, I just can't do that. Why? Well, God couldn't use me. All that. And I understand sometimes we're trying to figure out exactly what God wants us to do. But I can tell you some things that we can do while we're, we're waiting for that epiphany from God to show us exactly how he wants to do it. Guess what? Keep praying. Follow in the foots of Jesus. Multiply the word of God in your family and people that will, will be willing to receive that. Amen. And so with that being said, I want us to take a really good look at this. That right there preached by itself. So it's about knowing the master. Amen. And I put that in the wrong spot. So I want to talk a little bit about knowing the master. I'm going to read something here for you. Second Timothy 2 2. You have heard me teach these things that, that have been confirmed. By many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. I want you to hear that now. When, when we're called to be doing these things, you're, you're not, everybody's not going to respond to you just like you want, okay? But he goes back and tells them, this is Paul teaching right here, and he's talking to Timothy, and we've been following a lot of their life. He says, now look, now teach these truths to other trustworthy people. Let me ask you something. Are you found to be trustworthy with the Word of God? That's the only question you can, can answer. I didn't say that you got to be a Bible student. I didn't say that you have to know everything in there and speak Greek and Hebrew and all that. Can you be trusted with the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? That does not mean your, your life is perfect. We're going to get into that. But are we willing to share what God's done in our life? You know what? Many, many times this is what God has shown me. It was never about... Me knowing it all and learning this and all that. He wants me to grow in my relationship. But let me tell you what God has shown me. If you will just share what I've done in your life, I'll shine through you. We make it hard, guys. We make it hard. Just shine and share what God has done in your life. So look at this. If we want to know the master, run, we got, to, we got to continue to seek him. How often are we seeking the Lord? How often do we look into the things of God? Or do we just 
Let it fall where it lays. Look what it says right here in Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Do you believe many folks are actually seeking the Lord first? Let's just look at this. Take a minute. Anybody click through the TV lately? Watch the news? Read the paper? Does anybody read the paper anymore? All right. I got about five people plus my mom to get some newspaper. Everybody else watch online and everything else. And I think that's great. But think about that. So my first question is, do you really see that people are actually seeking Christ first as a whole? Not so much, right? Not so much. Are they seeking his righteousness? Not so much, right? So do we really know the master? Do we really know the master? Let's keep on going. We have become a, a me first society. Me, I say it all the time, what am I? me, 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 me. You know, we start looking at, hey, how's this going to, what's in it for me? And, and, and this is what happens over time. We start focusing on ourself, and we let all the other stuff go by. Did Jesus focus on himself when he was here? He was always focusing on the needs of others. A matter of fact, the reason why he came was because there was a need of others for him to come, amen? He came to save us, seek and save that which was lost. By the way, I was lost. How about you? you? Might as well say, yeah, because the Bible says that you were. Okay? <laughs> but I knew that. But I didn't know what to do with it. But I'll tell you what. When somebody told me about Jesus, and let me tell you this too. I don't know how many times people told me about Jesus. But the good news was they kept telling me about Jesus till they got through this noggin. And really it wasn't so much my noggin as much as my heart. And let me tell you, Mr. Rock and Roll, Mr. Karate Guy, Mr. Tough Guy cried like a baby when I got that message. And every time I talk about it, because I saw myself for the first time, really, and I, I, I wasn't out of whack in this uh, thing thinking I had it all figured out by no means, but I really got to see who Buddy Chapman was, and I didn't like that guy. There's a lot of things I still, I'm still working on, but I'm going to tell you this. When the light of the gospel message hit my life, I go, oh my gosh, I need Jesus. How about you guys? See, when the light of that message comes into you, the darkness of your life, it exposes everything. Everything. You see all the nooks and crannies and everything else. See, when things are, are kind of dim and the shades are pulled down and you, and you go across your coffee table and you take the pledge on there and he goes, man, that looks pretty good. And then the next morning, you open that blind up and the light comes in and you go, what in the world? Look at all those spots I missed. See, when the light of the gospel comes in and the truth of God's word comes in, that's the standard. And we go, what in the world <laughs> What is going on in my life? Right? But there's good news with that. The good news is that Jesus doesn't just leave us here. I want to go back to this right here. You wicked and lazy servant. Now, that's bad if your neighbor calls you that. It's terrible if one of your kids or your family can. But when the Lord Jesus Christ would speak that into your life, Oh, I don't want to sign up for that. And that's the reason I want to share the message with you today because there's no reason for us to feel like that. I want to go back through a few things. The first two guys, right, the servants, they were familiar with him. They followed the model of their master. The third guy was basically lazy. I'm good. Yeah. And he, and he copped out under the fear thing. And the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord and everything. And, and usually when it's talking about, usually it's a reverence. I say this a lot of times growing up. I was around drugs and alcohol pretty much all my life. And when I got into the rock and roll business, they would just pour that stuff through. I knew that if I ever dealt with that stuff it would kill my mom and dad. I knew the master. I knew my parents. I was like, I, could, I can't do that to them. Now, there's a lot of other stupid stuff I did, okay? But I go back to that because I thought, what kept me from doing that? And it was the love of my mom and dad. Let me tell you what. Your love for Christ will keep you plugged in. You got to keep the Bible open. You got to keep feeding that. And you know what? There's no reason for any of us sitting here today to hear that, you wicked and lazy servant. Because today, I want to go and talk about the treasure that is in you. Amen? 
So if Tim will put, roll that back, I got a little something that I want to share with you, but it's going to take a little minute. I'm, I know I've got something back here. Y'all, excuse me, I, I should have been prepared better than this, but let me see if it's back here. I know I got it somewhere. It's not there. It's, I had, I've been saving some stuff. I put it back there. Michael, can you give me a hand with this? I don't know. He's my go-to guy. Here we go. Man, this is heavy. I didn't realize I put all this junk in here. Can you, can you get the door? Appreciate that. Here we go. Man, that thing's heavy. Here we go. I just want to share a little bit about. Y'all got one of these? Whew. Mike, you might have to steady me here. Let's see if we could, we could slide that down just a, just a little bit. All right, thanks. Thank you. Let's slide this down here just a little bit. All right. Anybody got anything like this? You know, it's just been in a garage. It's been buried somewhere and stuff like that. Had a few miles on it and everything else. I'm the only one. How many, how many guys got garages? That might be your treasure chest. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys got two and go, hey, man, you park your car in there? What are you kidding? I'm thinking it's pretty good. If I can get through my garage like this, I think it's a win, man. Well, anyway, I want to share a few things today. And I hope you guys enjoy this because I'm going to tell you it's going to be a whole lot deeper than what you think. See, what's happening is this. As we start unpacking these things, we need to invest in the next generation. I got buddies go to church, pastors, everything. And I talk to a lot of people. Can you imagine that? And one of my buddies that, that, I, that, that I just love, good, good Christian brother in the Lord, they've been really trying to work through some stuff in his church, right? And at one time, his church was a thriving church. We've been there. I preached there. I spoke there. It's, it's great people, love people, everything. It's, it's good. But you know what? It's been dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And they went from about 700 to 300. And then they went from 300 to about 150. And now they're short $30,000 a month on the budget. There's, a, there's an issue, right? The treasure chest. How does that play into that? We're responsible for continuing to feed the work of the Lord. We're responsible for us to, to, to speak into the next generation. All right? I'm gonna, let me pick this. If you are above 40, raise your hand, please. I just See where I cut it off at? If you're above 40, you have been through some amazing things in your life that God can use to speak into the next generation to help them along the way. And I want to share, with, for everybody that's here today and thinking, man, that this... I don't have anything to, to, to share. Let me tell you, by the time we're done with this treasure chest, you're going to say, I got to get involved. Amen. And so we look at this. You can make a difference from just being you. I, I wrote this down. I saw this. I thought, this is great. I said, folks, don't check out on me yet, all right? I want to help you today to see that your life can be a difference. Your light can be a life. And you've heard it said life is like a box of chocolate, but really, your life is really like a treasure chest. Have you ever looked at that? You are literally a unique blend of experiences. Family experiences, work, business, church, successful things, failures, opportunities, missed opportunities, learning things, disability, medical miracles, all these things. Me and Jerry were talking about it today. He said, you ever seen a miracle? And I told him this. This was not being boastful. This was being humble. I said, every time I look in the mirror, I see a miracle. And I said, I'm looking at one now. He said, yes, you are. See, each one of us are, are a miracle. That God would choose us to carry the, the message of his son, Jesus Christ. That God would think you and you and you and me were worth giving his best. He gave his treasure. He left the treasures of, of heaven to come and live this life so that you could exchange your life by faith and have his. Amen? I want you to hear that today. But as we look through this, we are each a unique, unique blend of treasures. And I want to unpack that a little bit. Everybody ready? You better hold on now. I heard a guy, Miles Monroe, speak, a wonderful speaker. He just went home to be with the Lord not long ago. And you guys have heard me mention him. He say this. He says, the richest place on earth is that of the graveyard. When I first heard him say that, I said, what is he talking about? And then he explained it. 
He said, there are so many songs that have never been written that people carry to the grave. So many books that have never been completed that carry them to the grave. So many I love used. So many inventions. Don't let that happen to us. Let's take a look and see what's in our treasure chest. Many of these things, you guys are going to say, man, that's me. Some of you say, well, that doesn't really apply. I ask the Lord to help me put stuff in here that will touch each of your lives. Let's kind of walk through it. You know, in our lives, there's different things. I'm going to start off with this one. Somebody just said I improved my dating by 50%, didn't I? <laughs> you know, a lot of times, we don't know who we're talking to, do we? We'll put that mask on and hide behind things. Got your church face on? Got your business face on? Got your dad hat on? Whatever the case. Sometimes we go through life and people don't even realize who you are because you're hiding behind the mask of maybe your past or maybe what somebody told you or what you believed other than what God said. Don't let that slow you down. Amen? Let's take a look at a few more things. I got a bunch of them. Maybe, just maybe, you found the queen of your dreams and you've been married a long time. I just broke that with my fat head. And you know that actually serves a purpose because midway through that, everything went crazy. And you said, you know, how can I speak to somebody about marriage when I'm on my second one or my third one? That very thing might be the thing that equips you and qualifies you to speak into somebody's life. You hear what I'm saying? How many people learn more from their failures than other things? Amen. We really do. What about this? Maybe you're gifted in leadership and people seem to follow what you say. You're accountable for how you lead those folks. So maybe you don't even realize it. Maybe you say, oh yeah, yeah, well, you know, no. Have you, have you really thought about it, that God has equipped you to reach people? There's accountability with that. Let's keep on rolling. How about this? You're still holding that little trophy right there. You're still mad about it because you didn't get as big as one as Bobby Joe or Sally Sue. And you've allowed that right there to shackle you to the things that God had called you to do. Maybe a little rust on it and everything else. But, you, but you've thrown that back over here. How about you've had the privilege to serve your country? And when you come back, they didn't appreciate you. How about that? Yesterday, we were out on the town, and there was a man in a wheelchair, and his wife was pushing him. And I said, how y'all doing today? She said, do you know that you are speaking to a World World II vet? I said, sir, thank you for your service. I appreciate what you've done. She said, he's 95 years old. I said, buddy, you're looking good. You don't mind if I follow you around and see how, you, how you're eating and living so I can get up to 95? And he smiled. And I said, how are you doing, ma'am? She said, I'm good. I'm 92. 92 years old. She's shoving him, boy. I had to catch up. And, hey, I want to talk some more. <laughs> Granny was gone, boy. And I got to talk to him a little bit about the Lord. Come to find out the daughter lives in town. Isn't that amazing? Just took a few minutes. How often do we thank the folks that have gone before us for the peace, for the wisdom, for the opportunities? Think about that. You say, yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. Let me tell you what. When I talk to folks, I, I seem to gravitate to older folks a lot of times because I can learn a lot from them. But I want to encourage us to not only look forward, but also look the next generation behind you. How could God use your life to mentor them, not to multiply yourself, but to pull the gold out of their life so they could be all that God called them to be? Don't let these things that you tucked away in your treasure chest work against you. Let them work for you. Got a few more things. How about that? How about this? How about the old baseball scholarship? Woo, look at that. Everybody good, ain't it? Are you paying attention over there? Good. All right. What about that? The basketball. That's Miss Tanya. Woo. Yeah, there you go. Because when I heard about all those things, Tim used to watch her go there and say, man, she was the captain. She was this and this. She'd get out there, all that. 
I don't know. But you know what? You can use those things that you learn leading your team. You, could, you can remember when maybe you got passed over. Maybe you can remember when you struck out. And maybe you can remember when you hit the home run. All those activities and all those life things right there can be used to help the next generation. Not just your children, and that's great. But I'm talking about bringing up a generation behind us that will serve the Lord. I want y'all to look side by side. Just look at this side. Look over here. Y'all look over here. Look back over here. Look over here. Those folks, they got more hair than you and less wrinkles than you. Okay? They're the future. That was not in my notes. I probably should have left that out. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth. Look over here. Look, that, that's your generation. That's my generation right there. That the next generation to run with this thing. So guess what? I want to invest in them. I want to encourage them. I want to grow them in the Lord. What else do we got? How about that? You know what? That'll play right into it because you know what? Many of us are shackled to our past and never even realize we got the key with Jesus. Maybe we've actually been incarcerated or something. You say, man, God can't use me. I've done some time. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Paul was in jail right much too. Did he use him? You can speak to people that maybe I couldn't reach. Use what you have. Invest what you got. I went on a crazy shopping spree. I just love it. How about this? We've got the football scholarships. Oh, what about this? Everybody looking close at you. How about the big money? Oh, yeah. Got your attention now. Maybe you've made a lot of money. Woohoo! You could tell people how to do that or use it for the kingdom of God. Or maybe you lost a lot of money. And you could tell them, watch out for that stock market. Either way, you can be usable. You can be a difference maker. You can invest what you have. You can invest what you went through. Let's pick it up. Hey, a lot of times we just save up for a rainy day, man. And then what happens? You know? And then it's gone. My mom and dad saved all their life. They would do without so me and Donna could have it. Never wanted for anything. And I'll tell my dad, hey, look, man, get what you want. Nah, I'm good. I don't need that. I said, well, why are you saving that money? And it's not like it's a fistful of money. It's a working man. He said, so maybe you have a little bit better. Woo! But see, what my dad and mom gave me is far more than any money they could ever leave me. Far more. Trust the Lord. Love your family. You don't have to be right all the time. Say you're sorry. Forgive people. Treat people like you want to be treated. Make your word be your bond. Don't tear your name down. It goes on and on. Think about that. But you know what? Sometimes we got a few of these in our closet, don't we? Got a few skeletons, don't we? Woo! I can't ever run for office now. It don't matter. Because if you did, if, if not, they make something up anyway. <laughs> you know? It's true, isn't it? Those skeletons are, well, you just don't know. It's something. I like this right here. When I tell Denise about my past, she said, good thing I met you later because my mother would never let me date you early on. <laughs> God has a sense of humor and God has the perfect timing, right? What else we got? I'm getting down to it. What about this? That medal that you sacrificed for, that put your family on hold for, the money that you spent and the time that you didn't spend with the Lord, you did that because you got this nice, shiny little thing right here. And you know what? Most of the time when you go through somebody's stuff as they leave here and they go, what did Dad get that for? Oh, yeah. Okay, hopscotch, great. You know, the things that we put so much emphasis on are just going to rust. And they're just going to be beat up just like this box here. How about this? You ever seen one of those, Miss George? It sits on my desk. I see it every day. 
not only what it means about Jesus Christ as my Savior and what he did for me. I saw Bonnie the other day in this store, your daughter. And it was so amazing that I saw Bonnie at this time. She said, buddy, what are you doing here? I said, I'm looking for stuff from my treasure box. She said, what? I said, some sermon illustrations. And she said, and I told her, I said, you know, partly about this message makes me think of your dad. I used to love sneak away and get over to Mr. Charlie's house and Miss George's house. And on one of my visits, Mr. Charlie was sitting in his chair and he was whittling. And he told me this, and I've shared it before. He had no idea of what I've been studying on leadership and, 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 and building up folks and things like that. And he told me, he said, you know what, son? I said, what's that, Mr. Charlie? Because I said, tell me some things that, that you've learned along the way that'll help me make it better. You know what he told me? He said, everybody needs a mentor, son. And he's whittling. And that spoke to my heart. Boom! He says, you need somebody that's been down that path to show you maybe where some of the potholes are. I am grateful for that conversation. I'm grateful. He would share things like that. Miss Georgia, same thing. She shared about how she didn't even start doing some of her woodworking and color until she was in her 60s. And I go, there's still hope for me. <laughs> Man, I was panicking on my, I was panicking on trying to get my stick man together here. So, you know, I was like, Denise helped me out on that. And when I think about those folks that have invested in my life, I have fond memories. Yeah, it hurts my heart that they're gone. But they took some time with me to speak something into my life that would make a difference. They poured that into their families and different things like that as well. And you know what? When I shared that with Bonnie, she goes, thank you so much. Amen. A lot of times we look at this and we see a lot of these different things here as we go through life. The world has a lot of these treasure, treasure maps, don't they? Oh, go here, get rich. Go here and get that. Go over here, get this. Lose weight fast. You want to lose weight fast? <laughs> Sew your mouth shut. Put the duct tape on. There you go. We've got the new duct tape diet. Just put it right across them cheeks. Check back in three weeks, baby. You'll be down. You know, I'd probably chew right through the thing. <laughs> oh, you want to make some money? Here you go. You give me all your money, and I'll tell you how to make money. One of my buddies sent off one time on this getting rich thing. Send him back, send me this money. I'll give, you my, I'll give you my book on how to make money. He got the book, opened it up, and said, write a book to make money. Pass it on. How about that? There's one for you. You gotcha. But you know what? How about this? How about God's word? Do we just lay it up in our treasure chest and not look at it? Is it at the foot of your bed where you don't read it? Is it on the coffee table and nobody wants to touch it? You just put it there? Or do you open it up and it's got a little, little wear and tear on it? You know? Do we look into the word of God? You know? That's our weapon. As a matter of fact, the Lord says it's like a sword. Not to stab people with. But I'm going to tell you what. If we look to the word of God. It'll cut out all the lies. And leave the truth behind. And let me tell you friends. The truth is this. All of us have treasure. All of us has an opportunity. What are you investing in? Give the Lord a hand clap. Okay. So we'll pick it back up here with investing a little bit. Everybody doing good? All right. So my question is, invest what you have. When you invest, do you invest selfishly or selflessly? Only you know the answer. Think about that. And then I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit here. I want you to think about today. What about the reach back? Can you reach back and leverage what you have learned from your past for the benefit of those coming up? I am so grateful for those folks that have passed on what they've learned in my life. Godly information. Amen? How are we doing that? Who are you mentoring? Who are you pouring your life into? Hey, you might not be uh, responsible for them, how they receive it, 
but I do believe we're responsible for how we pour out. So I want to encourage those folks today. Be those that pour out. Amen? Invest in others. Look at this. I said it earlier, invest in the next generation. How do we do that, man? I want, to, I want to stop out here in camp just for a minute and just say, you know what? I believe we have an obligation to the Lord and those coming up behind us to train them up in the ways of the Lord. Or at least be willing. So I want to challenge everybody. That's, that's, and it doesn't have to be here. I just pick 40. If you're 40 and above, ask the Lord, who has he put in your life that you could come and speak into their life and pray with them and be a blessing to them? And, and pour into that next generation. We got grandparents here, and we got aunts and uncles here, we've got moms and dads here. But I, and, and we know that family is, is first off, we're talking about that, absolutely. But maybe there's somebody coming up in the job and, and, and where you're at and, and you need to train them and take them over. Are you training them to take over and, and, and see what's going on and, and pass that baton, right? And are you doing it in a godly fashion? I pray that as we look through this today, that we will invest in the next generation. And here you go. Will your investment yield a heavenly harvest? The things that you've been putting in your trunk for a rainy day, pull them out. The things I talked about today were not necessarily monetarily things. They were things that we could use spiritually. There's things that we could speak into your life on a whole different level. Again, I pray that God takes this message and touches each heart just the way it needs to be touched. Because I hear all the time, man, I am messed up. My buddy says this, he said, dude, I'm a messed up as a soup sandwich. That's pretty messed up. And he says, I pray every day. He tells me, I tell you, it's, it's funny, you know, I told you, he says, <laughs> he says, I pray today, Lord, protect me from me. I said, that's probably a good prayer for all of us, isn't it? But in the midst of that, See, just over the years, it's kind of amazing. I'll, I'll throw this back. My guys at work make me think about this. Grew up in a neighborhood, and man, we got into some stuff. How many people love lighting fires in the woods and playing in there, making their fort and everything? For whatever reason, right? No girls did that? They did in our neighborhood. They were tough. <laughs> right? And, and I don't care if it was 105 degrees, right? You got to light the fire. You got to have the fire. You're out there doing that stuff, man, hanging out and doing these things, and, and then doing a whole lot of stuff you're not supposed to. And over the year, NASA Langley Research hi have hired three of us to work in the same facility. <laughs> I'm thinking, woo! My buddy said, hey, it's a long way from Buckrow, ain't it? It's a long way from Buckrow. Can you believe that? Do you remember when we were skipping school, hanging out and doing all this stuff, and they let us work on stuff going to the moon? I said, that's God. That's God. You know, it's funny now. But you know what I also see? Some of my buddies I work with, one particular guy, he had that uh, lymphoma stuff. And he went through that. And that man worked two jobs, took treatments, and took care of his family while he went through that. Another one of my buddies that, that, that I grew up with worked like 24 years, seven days a week on an assembly line. And finally got blessed with, with, with the job that he really loves now. He said, I never even knew there was a job like this. And I've been out there 32 years, and it's good to hear that because sometimes I go, man, I can't believe it. Ooh, this ain't a bad job, right? Don't forget where you came from. You don't have to stay there. But those experiences that, that I, I see in my friends and all that, Kevin, I love it. He always say, I won't always electrician. I always say, yep, I won't always a preacher either. I sat down with a guy yesterday. How many know I, I've turned, it, I've turned my, my little weekend into a breakfast ministry? You know, I've been, telling, I've been sitting down. So I sat with my buddy Andre yesterday. I was talking to him a little bit. And uh, it's kind of amazing. And he says, what do you do? I leaned over there with egg on the side of my face. I said, I tell people about Jesus. He said, you do? I said, yeah, man, I do a little preaching and stuff. Get the word out where I can. I said, do you know him? He said, yeah, I know him. I said, are you saved? He said, yeah, man, I'm saved. He said, I've been praying, you know, I've been praying and seeing how God's going to want to use me and different things like that and all that. And he's talking to me about this. He said, you know, my buddy's got the restaurant. He's cooking and doing some stuff. And he's written about five books. He said, man, he uses D. He's got, he's got the books and everything else like that. And right in the middle of this, he was talking about, he was comparing his life to somebody else. Now, my friend Adrian 
got hit by a car when he was 13. He doesn't have good use of the right hand in his side here. I said, uh, where do you live at? And he told me he lives way across town. I said, man, what are you doing all the way over here? He said, you remember the guy you used to own out, the big heavyset guy? I said, yeah, I remember the guy you used to own this restaurant years ago when we were kids. He said, when I was little, I used to come here with my dad when I was three years old. I always liked coming here. It's a safe place for him. He's thinking about those memories, right? And then he got back on about our other buddy writing all these books. And this guy is upbeat. He is upbeat. And I looked at him and I said, Adrian, I said, look, man. I said, just because your book doesn't have a cover on it don't mean you're not writing a chapter every day. And his toothpick fell out of his mouth. He went, he said, I've been praying about that. I said, dude, let me tell you, you're going to touch people's life that I will never touch. You've come through, the, 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 through this life, man. You've been through some of the struggles with, with, with you know, accident and different things like this. All these, you know, God's going to use you like, he, like, man, like he can't use him or her or me. And it was like I was pulling the bricks off his back. He said, yeah, he could use me. I said, yes, he'll use you. Are you willing to be used? He said, I'm willing. Think about that. There's somebody you're going to run into today that might just need a little fill up. See, I could go in the restaurant. I could sit down there by myself. It doesn't say nothing. Just, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll take a hungry man special thanks. That's good. But I've, choosed, I've chosen to reach back and leverage what you have learned from a past to benefit that of others. Yeah, man, let's talk about that. I remember this. What about this? How did you get through this? How did you get here from there? I'm talking about invest what you have. And you know what? I want to encourage each of us to seek the Lord about that. Pray, pray, pray. Lord, who is it that you'll bring alongside that I can speak into their life? But we want to speak in godly wisdom. Am I plugged in? Am I hearing from the Lord so that I give them good information? So it's a win-win. As we press into the Lord, God's going to bring people that we can pour out on. Amen? Everybody doing good? You know why that's so important? Because there's accountability. We've been talking about that a lot here lately. I'm going to go ahead and roll on into that and get on going with it. Accountability is for everyone. Let me hear you say everyone. everyone. That means me too. And you, right? Look at this here. James uh, 4, 17. Therefore, whoever knows the right thing to do yet fails to do it is guilty of sin. God's word is so clear. Notice it says... Whoever knows the right thing to do, yet fails to do it. Not if you do it wrong. I don't know what to do, so I just do it wrong. I might do it wrong, so I'm not, you know what I mean? I watch a couple of videos. I, I'm, I'm always studying and looking and trying to, to pull in the, 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 just the message that God has for us. And I saw something. Anybody watch some of these videos when they prank people? Some of it's kind of crazy. But I went through some of this stuff when I was looking at different illustrations and there was two guys. Has anybody ever been bullied in school or work or at home? Yeah. Yeah, it ain't, it's not a picnic, man. It is not good. So what these two guys did, they're about college-age guys. They went up to a college campus. I do not think this is a good idea, but I'm going to tell you it was a teachable moment. And one guy was going to be the bully, and the other guy was going to be the guy that was a little soft, a little, little kind of wimpy guy, you know. And he was going to pick on this guy and see what people did. Take after take after take after take. He go over there and slap the guy on the head and say, man, what are you wearing those clothes for? What are you doing? Picking it. People just grab their book bag and just go leave. Walk off. Next one. Left again. My heart's breaking at this. Because it was showing us we don't want to get involved so much, right? Now, look, I'm never going to say put yourself in a bad situation. Hey, they could have used a cell phone and called campus police or something like that. Okay, I'm not saying that. But I'm going to get to the heart of the matter of this. It went on for a while. And all of a sudden, man, these girls were studying over here. And that guy pushed that guy and fell down and stuff fell out of his books. And all of a sudden, this little girl jumped up with great boldness and said, stop it. And he kept going. Well, why do you take it from him? She says, because it's not right. What does that scripture say? It says, therefore, whoever knows the right thing to do, yet fails to do it, is guilty of sin. She just knew this ain't right. These guys were towering over her. She jumped in front. She said, you stop it now. 
And she helped that guy pick his stuff up and everything else. And they said, ma'am, I want you to look at something. I want you to look at You see that camera right there? And she was still hot. Yeah, I see it. She said, we wanted to know, why, why did you jump in? Because she had dealt with that in her past. See how she could use that for the good? She said, but it's not right, and I'm not going to stand by when I see something's not right, and I know that we can make it right. Man, help us to be the people that don't have to be critically, you know, politically correct. You know? Well, I don't know about that. No. We have edged God out of so many things, and we're going to still be accountable for that. But look at this. I said, we may not have to jump into a fight, but there's things we can do. We can pray for folks. In that particular situation, I don't know how everybody's going to react. A lot of times I think, well, if they did that, I'd do this. I don't know. But I pray for all of us that, one, that we would seek the Lord in wisdom of God and be able to step in and step up on, on all different levels. That was just a really in-my-face type thing that I shared with you. Maybe it's like, well, we're going to pray over our food at the restaurant. I don't care who's there. I've told you all this before we go out to eat and everything, and the guys that, sit, the guys that eat with me all the time, they already know what's going to happen. You know? They get in everything like this and moving around and all that. You get a new guy, he just throwing throwing stuff in there, and my buddy be moving the ketchup bottle, all this. He adjusting his drink, take a couple of drinks, because he doesn't. Well, I know he's going to get ready to pray, right? And I don't make anybody feel bad or anything. I said, hey, man. I said, how about we put the blessing on the foods, man? You never know where the people's hands been. And they go, you're right. Go ahead and pray. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I approach it lightly, but at the same time, that's, they, they know what I'm about. They know that this is important to me. They know that, you know what, as we look through this, this is not just a book that I look at. This is a book, let me tell you, that I desire to live out of. Let me just tell you, I don't always live out of it as best. Never going to come to you and say, well, you know, that, that's why I always say, you want to pray for somebody, you can pray for me. But my desire is to live my life out like Christ. And you know what? You can't do that with this closed. You can't do this without the accountability. Amen? So let's keep on rolling with that. So my question is, what's in your treasure chest? Think about that. Or maybe the bigger question is, what are you burying? What are you burying? What is it? Today, I pray that something was said to encourage us in the Lord. Something that, that says, man, I, I, I got to get rolling. Some of you have heard this. I share it every now and then. And I could see this right now when I close my eyes. When Jesse was born. I remember they handed them to me. Happy day, man. I already had my big boy. Now I got two. And in that moment, I don't know if I was just God speaking to me or whatever. In that moment, in my mind's eye, I saw an hourglass with sand. And I thought, what in the world is that? And I thought, I only have a short time to impact his life. I only have a little bit of time I got to pour in him. Oh, I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know how, long my, how much sand I got in my hourglass, but you know what? I'm going to use it. Every grain, every day, every time, every prayer, every I love you, you know? And sometimes, I don't know if y'all know about it, maybe girls do it. I, have, I don't have any girls. I have two boys, you know? But, but once they get about 15, 16, 17, 18, they don't want you to hug them. Guess what I do? I still hug them. I don't care. Don't make any difference. What I tell you big guys that come in, don't get too big where I can't hug you now. <laughs> I tell you that every week. Big guys come in and they hey, how you doing? I say, how you doing? How you doing? Let people know you love them, man. Let people know you care. Everybody, I believe, has that hourglass or life glass. How about that? And the day you come out crying, Boop, it's flipped, and it's pouring, and it's pouring, and it's pouring, and it's pouring, and it's pouring. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to take every grain I got to share about Jesus. I'm going to take every little swirl of that sand in my life to talk about Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. I wasted 30 years. 
I wasted a whole long, long time. And I don't get all bent out of shape and go, well, you know, this. God says, don't look back, look forward. I've given you the tools. I've given you this now. I've given you my word. Hey, look, man, I'm going to tell you what. I like, if, on mine, myself, I'm just like, a, boom, there it is. Run out in the yard and get it if you want it. But that ain't nothing compared to what I could give you. I can give you my love. I can give you my love. understanding. I can pray for you. I can encourage you. I can lift you up when you fall down. I can put some Band-Aids on some stuff. Something I learned, first little thing, being a dad. Thomas fell off his bike, busted his chin open, and he was fine. Then mom looked at it. She was not fine. And I said, it's all right. And I said these words. He probably needs some stitches. And he went, ah! Yeah, that's why he grows a beard now. I told him he didn't need to train in wheels. I was wrong. <laughs> Dad said, you don't need that stuff. Get out of there. Get up. You'll be all right. You ain't moving. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, all those things, man. We're learning. We're learning. We're learning. Don't keep them to yourself. Don't bury your treasure. Let's end with this, guys. Bury treasure here. 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 7. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. This is Paul talking. And he's, and he's sharing this with Timothy and for us today. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I'm going to read this again. Life is not about what you accumulate. It's about the lives you impact along the way for the kingdom of God. What are you pouring out? What you pour out is so much greater than gold, man. Don't miss the message and think it's just about that. It's the gospel. It's eternal life. It's mentoring. It's investing. It's discipleship. It's God's love in action. Man, friends, today, don't bury your treasure. Don't bury your treasure. You say, well, I don't have much to give. Well, you know what? We've, we've, we've already cured that you have a lot of things that you can share and i'm going to tell you something else the very thing i said this earlier i want you to hear it again the very thing that you think that might disqualify you might be the very thing that god uses to leverage that information to the next generation to the people around you to the people you love to the people that are searching to help them man come on let me tell you i've said this before I pray that keep the promise doesn't just stop if I fall over because it's a whole lot bigger than me. But if we don't prepare for things, guess what? You'll see it drop off and drop off and drop off and drop off. And next thing you know, wow, okay, what are we going to do? Shut the doors. I'm not up for that. How about you? And it's not so much about the church as it's about the church and the kingdom. And so I want you to hear that today. And there's a couple other things here. I said, Lord, help us to dig out the gold that you've placed in others as well as ourselves. Now, I want to share something. This was from my heart last night, and I'm going to read this to you. And this is the best that I could put into words what I wanted to share with you today. I always ask people, I ask Tim all the time when we're riding over to my mom's. I said, so Tim, what was your takeaway? I ask you, what is your takeaway from today's message? I'm going to share mine with you. When I die, there will be no reason to rush and read my will. Because if I live my life out like Christ, you have already received the greatest treasure I could ever leave behind. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you so much that when we leave here, I want to be empty out for you. Lord, when we live here, we know that there's accountability. Lord, we have an opportunity to invest in others. Lord, how do you want us to do that? Lord, we seek you today. And Lord, I pray as we come together right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we, we see that, you know what, what you've given us is a great, great treasure. Share it, man. Don't wait around. If you're listening to this, share the message. Hit the button now. You ain't got to wait till I'm done talking. But let me tell you, don't let the skeletons of your past keep you away from the things of God. Don't let past mistakes keep you from receiving his grace. Don't, don't let the woulda, shoulda, couldas rob you of what God can do and will do in you and through you. Lord, I pray today, I pray today that, Lord, we just get out of the way and you fill us up afresh. Lord, we sang earlier about empty me. I, Lord, that's my prayer today. Empty us so that we can fill up on you. I talked about it earlier, about that, that, that hourglass, man. Have you ever viewed your life as an hourglass? 
and it's going, and it's going, and it's going, and it's going. I can tell you right now in my life, I'm 53 years old. I will not live as long as I've already lived. And I want to make every day count. And I hope every one of us live a long, healthy life. But even more than that, I hope we live a life that is God-sized. And we pour it into others so that they can be different makers. Let me tell you what. There is nothing greater than passing on the legacy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've done a many, a many, a many, a many a funeral. And let me tell you, it's all the difference in the world. There's people coming and say, oh, Uncle Joe was a good guy. He had a real fast car and he had a horse and he used to buy me candy. Amen, he's gone. And then you go somewhere else. And you've got people that preach the funeral for you because they want to share what this man or this lady has done in their life. They helped me. They allowed me to call them at any time. They prayed with me. When I didn't have, they gave. They taught me how to do this. They showed me how to do this. They, 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 they listened to me. Let me say that again. They just listened to me. And they love me where I am. And with that being said, let me tell you, God loves you right where you are. But he loves you so much he refuses to leave you there. He wants to bring you home when it's time. And so today, if you're listening, if you've never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never opened the treasure box of heaven and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the only way to heaven, not a way, the only way, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You can have that today. You say, what must I do? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news, the message of Jesus Christ, coming and living a sinless life to pay our sin debt in full. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus poured out his blood, his life on the cross so that when we receive it by faith, we can have eternal life. And let me tell you this, when Jesus died, we died with him, spiritually speaking. But he rose again on the third day, physically, and sits at the right hand side of God. And let me tell you, that's victory right there, friends. So let me tell you, I pray everybody that hears this message, I don't care when it is, that they never bury their treasure. And you can know Jesus. I'm going to read this one more time. When I die, there will be no reason to rush and read my will. Because if I live out my life for Christ, you will have already received the greatest treasure I could ever leave behind. Write it down. Remember that on the day I leave here, and I pray that I live up to that. And the only way I can is through the power and the grace and the love of Christ. And I pray you do too. Amen. Friends, if you're listening today, I pray that today's message touched your heart. I pray that it draws you closer to the things of God. Don't bury your treasure. You got any questions? Send us a note. We love you. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye bye. All right.